Welcome to the Mental Insights Podcast. This is a community aimed at understanding all sides of mental health, addiction, and homelessness. Each interview will include either a personal story or an expert's advice within one of these fields. The goal of this project is to promote awareness, guidance, and support for anyone who is affected by these challenges. Thank you all for listening. Welcome back to the Mental Insights Podcast. This is your host, Brennan Catulli, and we are here today for Season 2, Episode 2 with Bill Protzman. Bill, thank you for being here today. I, I greatly appreciate it. Glad to be here, Brendan. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. I'm excited for, uh, for this conversation because it's really something I've never really dove into yet. And when I came across your work, I was extremely excited. And to give my audience a brief little introduction about your work, Bill's on a mission to raise awareness for the power of music as self-care. He's a successful IT entrepreneur who is the founder of Music Care Incorporated. And Bill is a living example of the power of music and how it can be a tool to save lives many lives rather. He is an active volunteer within the military veterans and music organizations. And Bill will be joining the Mental Insights podcast to speak about music as a tool to use in deficiency and as well as a tool for growth. So again, Bill, thank you. And I'm excited to dive deep into these topics within the first episode. Today, we'll be speaking directly about as a t- music as a tool for um, uh, use and deficiency, and I think this is something that we'll definitely be able to uh, dive very deep into, given your organization. Hey, glad to be here. Isn't, isn't deficiency a lousy word? <laughs> I mean, who wants to talk about being deficient? <laughs> I see a show of hands. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't expect it, given what we're aiming to do. But it's, it's exactly. It's certainly something that I think, you know, you need to talk about both sides of the spectrum in order to, you know, gain that perspective. Gain that yeah, we do. We do. So I'll, I'll own the word deficiency. It's, a, it's an okay word, but it ain't mine. It came from Maslow. So remember Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, how we sort of go up this pyramid. And there's a point in the pyramid where things change from just sort of getting along or basic survival to where you get to success. And Maslow describes that point as the break between deficiency and growth. So if you're dealing with what he calls physiological needs, things like food and shelter and safety and um, belonging and like being a part of some community that you can thrive in, getting to that place is all like overcoming deficiency. And then once you're at that place and you feel supported and you're ready to go, uh, you, can, you can move up into growth and get to self-actualization and, and you know, sort of reach the limits, get what they call significance and success. So uh, we're, we're going to talk in the first episode here about intervening with stuff that we don't like, like post-traumatic stress or just trauma in general. There's so much in that, uh, help me, I'm stuck, I need to move forward, what do I do, uh, that... Maslow called deficiency, but it's not a judgment. Okay. It's just a, it's just a way of describing where you are. It makes sense. It, it certainly does. And it's something that, you know, we all face in our daily life. And, you know, as you know, as many know, everybody has some, some type of challenge, whether it's mental, physical, emotional, and all of these can, can correlate to exactly what we're talking about. Given music can be such a powerful tool and, you know, to really, give everybody a good sense of, of truly the work that you're doing, then we'll, we'll peel it back into the layers of, you know, some of, some of these deficiencies, some of these challenges that we do face to start, give us a brief explanation as, you know, what is music care? Who's your target audience and kind of who can benefit from music care in general? So I function as a coach basically, and that could be coaching someone who is homeless, who has a whole different set, of needs than someone who's a, um, like a leader, an executive in a company. So in, in this process, what we do is we uncover where your pain points are, and then we find a musical intervention, I'm gonna use the word intervention for deficiency, that can meet you at your point of pain and open up the potential for moving forward, for moving out of that pain into contentment or even into pleasure. Make sense? It, it does, yeah. It's a, pretty basic way that we work on things, right? Um, In deficiency, oftentimes you're dealing with what look like problems. 
So a problem that you might have is one of, gosh, you know, where's my next dollar coming from? Where am I going to live? These are really basic things that homeless people deal with. And of course, the, the idea here is that you can either look at that and have coping skills, or you can look at that same problem and say, hey, there's a way to move through this. This problem offers me an opportunity that I wouldn't otherwise have to be able to achieve something that I would not otherwise be able to achieve. And yeah, putting a roof over your head is a pretty important achievement if, you're, if you haven't got one. Certainly. So it's, it's a pretty common thing, but how do you engage music with that? And what is Music Carol about? So where I come from, being a piano player all my life, it started to dawn on me a long time ago that things were easier with music. What are those things? Well, anything that you do, but the attitude that you bring to that is so much better when you can line it up intentionally with a, a trigger, music's a trigger to do that, to help you uh, engage and reach your full potential on whatever that thing is that you're, you, you're trying to intervene with. So what does that look like? Well, if your issue is homelessness and you've got to focus on a lot of things when you're homeless, um, there's this sort of scattered, um, it, 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 it's a cluster fire kind of a thing. There's so much to do if you want to get a house. Uh, you're, you're dealing with government agencies that are helping support you as much as possible. Uh, you're dealing with a whole long list of paperwork that has to go with that. You have to do the work of trying to find a, a residence that you can actually afford and work with the landlords. And there's a bunch of agencies that help you with that. So there's, there's uh, NGOs, nonprofits that are helping in this process. Uh, obviously, if you're looking for work and you don't have the skills you need, you're doing stuff to learn skills and you're, and you're trying to get a job at the same time as you're doing all this other stuff. It's a huge project to get out of homelessness. And oftentimes, but not in every case, there's other issues too. Um, you might be dealing with a disability of some kind. It could be mental, it could be physical. In fact, a lot of homeless people who are dealing with disabilities uh, get government support in the form of SSI. So they can't afford some stuff, but getting from the, oh, I can afford some stuff to getting a house, there's a jump there. So this can be a very challenging problem for a lot of people who are dealing with homelessness. So how do you engage music with that? Why would you want to engage music with that? Well, it turns out that music helps us focus. Just bringing in some music can help give you a piece that you wouldn't otherwise have. And in that momentary piece, you can bring focus to a task and actually get a task done. And it turns out that putting a task to music is a helpful way of sort of greasing the skids, making that work. Of course, it's gotta be the right music. So Music Care is all about learning how to engage your music, the music that you love, appropriately for the task at hand. And this is weird because all of us are different, right? So uh, if you love metal, that's a different kind of person than someone who doesn't like metal. But it turns out that metal music can help reduce someone who spins at a pretty high level, like who's dealing with schizophrenia tendencies. Metal can help bring that person down to a, a quote, normal functioning level where they can accomplish stuff. Or if you're someone who is so just like lethargic and depressed and given up and slow, you can use music to help bring you to a place where again, you can function like a normal person for a little while and actually accomplish work. That's the hardest thing about being homeless is what do I do and how can I focus in on doing that work? So the agencies I work with tell me that after the music class, you know, the music class, right? The clients are much more focused, much more restful and, and able to actually do things that they wouldn't normally in their normal effect be able to accomplish. And that's a huge thing just from like engaging the music that you love. Is that cool or what? <laughs> it's so much dang fun too. I've had such a blast doing this work, particularly with at-risk people. It, it certainly is incredible to see and to see the impact. I think, you know, there's so many people experiencing these issues and this is one realm that I think when I first heard of it, I was saying and thinking, I've never seen this done before. I've never really heard it being done. And that's why I was so intrigued to hear how this goes about because it's, it's such a unique tool in order to bring someone to that next step. You spoke about how, actions really change once you're able to kind of trigger, once you're able to bring them to, you know, quote, norm. 
but really the first step before they're even able to act is one's belief system. It's one's thought process in order to say, all right, how do I go from my position A to B in order to get housing, in order to get a job or just provide a safe environment for themselves. So really to bring that into what you do within music care, what changes can you see within music that has the effect on one's belief system, thought process, or even their emotional behaviors? What a great question. Uh, music is this outside thing. And oftentimes we like to own it and say, oh, that's my favorite song. But really the music is this objective sound and rhythm that's happening out there independent of us. Yeah, it has effects on us, but we can look at it objectively. And the two of us could sit down and say, hey, there's that music thing out there. What does it do to us? How does it trigger us? And I don't know what we're, we could pick any kind of song we're talking about, but let's just pick one and say that we've done that. And that you know, Brendan, that that song does different stuff for you than it does for me. Like maybe for me, that's a peaceful song, but for you, that's an agitating song. It may, it's disturbing in some way. No judgment on that. It's just a difference that we have. And that's a really great way of being able to say, hey, here's how I feel in this moment. And I can really connect with, with honest feelings about this thing. They're not pointed at any one person. They're just, this music does this to me. That's how I feel. And you can own it in the same way, completely without judgment. Just say, you know what? I don't like that music, right? It, it, it bugs me. What's wrong with that? That's amazing. You've got an insight that you didn't have before. Now, you can unpack that and go, okay, so why do I like this? Well, it makes me feel joyful. It makes me feel peaceful. It makes me feel relaxed, whatever. Pick the, pick the feeling that you like. And the other guy who might be saying, I don't like it, it's like, well, it makes me agitated. It, it's, it's slightly disturbing. I get, I get triggered by that. It makes me feel anxious in some way. Hey, that's great, great information to have. Why? <laughs> because there's going to be times in your life where you're anxious. It happens, you know? There's going to be times in, the, in your life where you're joyful. And it turns out that if you support those feelings with a musical trigger, the feelings will flow through you much quicker than if you, if you stuff them or suppress them. It's a really good thing to let feelings flow, people. I mean, they're just feelings. They're just chemicals in your brain, right? It's an oversimplification. But the idea is to allow that stuff to flow. And if you can identify something that's making you anxious and you've got some anxiety music to play with that, that's like becoming a friend to anxiety. You're still going to feel the anxiety, exactly. but it's not going to be overwhelming and it's not going to derail you from what you want to do. It's like, oh, hey, anxiety thing that I don't want. Here's music to play with. And now that anxiety is going to flow and leave me free to choose the next thing. And by the way, when feelings flow through, they do leave some energy behind. And there's some decent energy in anxiety. Maybe it activates you. It makes you want to get up and do something, that, you can use that. That's good energy. Provided you aren't all dragged down by the sort of negative side of anxiety that, that wants to make you worry and lock you up and slow you down. Letting it flow frees you to be able to do what you can do with that energy. Whether it's joy or anxiety or whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, in, in a way, we like certain feelings. But let's face it, they're all feelings. And they all have this information and energy that can help us. They're certainly all valid. And, you know, as we say, these belief systems really then curate into, like you're saying, behaviors and actions. And within, you know, this group of people, it's taking that next step, taking that action of whether it's reaching out to certain organizations, whether it's taking that next step to, you know, make that move towards housing. How have you seen the impact of music had, had a change on some of the clients' behaviors, some of their even their personality, like, can you see a large difference within just a few sessions of music and how that can kind of correlate to them saying, all right, I can do this and having that belief system to take the action, not just the thought. It's a great question. The, being aware of what music is doing to us kind of lets us step back and see ourselves objectively. And I can say, oh yeah, there's Bill. He likes to be worried, you know, and, with that knowledge, you can then also sort of begin to steer the ship. And, and this is the mental insight for this whole process right now. It's like, oh, I recognize that this music has triggered me to anxiety. Wow. If you're someone who's dealing with basic survival, that's a huge observation. You don't have the opportunity to be objective and think about yourself. You're so caught in the whole, got to get it done, the push, the crush of just, you know, safety 
that stepping back and being objective about yourself is brand new. And when that starts to happen, and when you have a reliable way of doing that, whenever you're triggered, you can then, um, you can then use that energy to say, oh yeah, there's that guy who stole my shoes last night, again. <laughs> I'm not gonna be worried about that tonight, because even though I might lose my shoes, it's not the end of the world. So you gain a perspective that you wouldn't have otherwise once you begin to look at yourself objectively. And if, if you're listening to this and you've had therapy, you know what this is all about. But oftentimes for people who have hit the streets for the first time, that's the last thing that they wanna think about. What kind of you know, emotional mental support do I need in this place? <laughs> you're talking about food. So that, just that moment of objectivity, what a gift to be able to give to yourself any time that you need it, which is frequently if you're living on the street. It's, it's truly, it's, it's, it's miraculous. It's so true. I think because that grounding, it changes their perspective from their position. And then once they gain some of the freedoms and some of the responsibilities, when they're able to take that next step is, is so profound. And I think that's why they're so, you know, first, important to change the belief system because the action then just spirals once they're able to kind of see how to take care of themselves, which in turn is what we all need to do before we can do anything, before we can provide ourselves the right shelter, the right food, all of the basic necessities of life. We need to learn how to be within ourselves, be within our mind and body and and try to navigate that, which is so great that music can be a tool to, you know, trigger that and trigger being a word that you'd really normally associate with a negative connotation of saying, oh, this environment triggered me to have anxiety or a negative feeling, but you're flipping that around with music in order to trigger positive emotions or just a different perspective for them to see, which is truly remarkable. You asked me about results, and I think it's really interesting um, to note that some people want to be homeless, and it, it's hard to be, it's hard to stand in judgment of that. If, if homelessness, if living on the street, if being like a, a romantic professional hobo is your thing, that's sort of beautiful in a way. But uh, a lot of people who don't want to be there also find themselves in a place where they, they respond poorly to that. It's like, no, I don't want to be on the street. I've been here for four years living in my car, whatever. So the peace that comes from knowing that you're okay without the judgment that says you shouldn't be homeless, if that makes any sense. I know that's kind of crazy, but if, if you're in a place where homelessness is your thing, why not thrive there? If you're in a place where homelessness has come to you and you need to move through that, why not move through that? You know, there's ways to do both. And to be fully aware and present and, and comfortable with who you are is something that I think is the biggest single effect of working with homeless people for such a long time. Um, clearly there are so many issues, but a homeless person who feels valued for who they are is a different homeless person than someone who doesn't. I don't care about any of the other issues that are out there. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're homeless and you feel like you've got a connection to something, that's beautiful. A lot of people that aren't a homeless that have houses that have front doors aren't connected to their next door neighbors Absolutely. and and you know, we need some of that coherence in our society right now to be able to do things better than we have in the past you know we need to be able to collaborate versus compete competing on the street is very difficult and it can be a dead end but especially if you're dealing with like physical illness and stuff like that but if you're connected I mean, there are people on the street dealing with cancer, there are people on the street dealing with all kinds of crazy physical issues, let alone mental ones. But if you're connected in a community, so bringing music to a community that way is a beautiful way of helping people to find support within their own community, within, their, within the friends that they know, within the acquaintances that they know. And that works for homeless people, it works for veterans who are dealing with post-traumatic stress, active duty folks who are dealing dealing with post-traumatic stress, all kinds of people who are in that just barely getting by kind of mindset, uh, they can benefit from the, the coherence that comes from enjoying music, not just as a single person by themselves, but as a community where music can come in and play. We've seen that work so many times. And, and it really is a beautiful thing to watch the lights come on. Um, I, a quick story that I often tell is about working with a, a group of homeless people 
to build up a playlist for sadness. And the, the way that I teach it, you only need four songs. So we'd done this committee thing and we're choosing four songs, we're discussing them, we're putting, picking the order, all of that. We finally got to a place after about three weeks where we put on the playlist and listened to all four songs. And it turns out that while we started with sadness, the playlist was really about loss. And when the class took the time to listen to that loss playlist, wow, there, it was so silent. When, when we were done, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Everybody kind of got the safety of being with loss with real intention just to be in that place. And it was so freeing because after you do that, like the, the weight lifts for a time and, and you don't have to carry around that, that weight of loss for some period of time, it's, it's flowed through you, it's gone. Especially when you interact and feel that with a community, as you're saying, with other people, I think yeah. that's, that's such an important, you know, topic to bring up is, is that sense of community, those, those relationships, just feeling value around us is, you know, one of the basic necessities that we really need as humans is, is to connect, is to feel valued. And that's something that is definitely at the forefront that needs to happen. When you're speaking about caring for others, when you're speaking about especially ones who are homeless, those who really don't have the, the bare necessities, as we're saying, that they have within their life, you obviously have many organizations that are in play that are really being caregivers towards these. And that has been shown to be very emotionally daunting. It can be very challenging for many to care for someone who's in such a place that you can only help them t to some extent. When you know, you're going through this work, can you speak about some of the importance of caregivers and maybe what we need to do to provide help for them as well? Um, last year, I spoke with a woman who strictly provides uh, resources for caregivers um, yeah. for those who experience mental health challenges because of the utmost importance. And I didn't think about that until the past year or two, realizing how, how emotional that can be. And I've experienced it with people firsthand in my life. And now I'm starting to realize the importance of it. So could you share how, how the role caregivers play within music care, within health care in general, and you know, how we can support them moving forward? I actually got started in this work because a friend encouraged me to work with caregivers and with an organization at that time, and it was in the desert in Palm Springs, um, to help caregivers deal with their situations. So oftentimes a caregiver is just a regular person whose spouse or child or something becomes chronically ill, and they have to rise to the occasion and do things that they have, first of all, no training for, and secondly, that are pretty much around the clock 24-7. And um, the statistics aren't great. <laughs> In fact, at the time, uh, this was 15 years ago now, but at that time, the statistics were that the, the lay caregiver is not gonna last as long as the person they're caring for. Like the caregiver was predeceasing the one they were caring for. It's a stressful thing. It's incredibly stressful and it, it's all consuming. And since that time, I've learned uh, from a friend whose son is autistic and now 22 years old, uh, that there's a life commitment to this sort of thing or if you're dealing with a, a grandparent or a parent who has dementia or Alzheimer's and you're the caregiver, you're the point man, um, that's huge. It, it changes your life. And even if you come from a place of growth and sufficiency and all of that and you're self-actualized, boy, this is gonna drag you right back down into a bunch of problems and you need help. <laughs> You've gotta be able to unpack the stress and be able to unpack the, just the physical labor of doing that. And it, it's, it really hits you hard in life However, uh, you can find solace. So way more than just putting on music to rest, there's a way of engaging music with your belief system so that you can use music, music to enliven gratitude, enliven compassion, in, in, enliven the good stuff you know, that's in your belief system that you need to be able to hang on to for support. And we can talk about how to do that in, in the growth segment, but imagine for a second that you can connect yourself with gratitude instantly when you need it just bang, turn it on, and it's like an actor being able to come up with the attitude of gratitude, but that it's genuine, authentic. Music can take you there. What if you need to be able to come up with, the, with just endurance? We all know music is great for exercise and working out, 
but by connecting your endurance to music in a, in a mindful way, when you need that extra boost, you've got it. Isn't that cool? And, and you know, you need a lot of extra boosts when you're doing care. Uh, I'm in a place where I've seen both my parents pass away and watch the care that they received. And, oh my gosh, just the practical, like the nursing care that's available to someone in a hospital. What an incredible gift until you've had to do that, like on your own without the hospital setting, you don't recognize how beautiful it is that palliative care is available for people at the end of life. That's just such an amazing thing that we do. Wow. If you could do that for everyone in your life, just by showing up and in a moment saying, Hey, Brendan, so good to see you today. You look great. How are you doing? Like, does that happen? <laughs> we could do this more. And to be able to bring the authenticity to that, and that's, that's where music opens it up. Because I could show up and say, hey, Brandon, how's it going? Different effect. But by connecting it to the authentic interest and the authentic compassion and the care and just like bringing that, music allows that. And turning that into a practice, you can use that all over the place. You, you truly can because it's something that we can connect on on all levels. And it's something I think some people, when we're speaking about emotions and some of these behaviors, a lot of people are, you know, held back. They're kind of astray to kind of dig deep into some of the emotions or some of the feelings that they have throughout some of these instances. But music can kind of be that, that middleman and, and bring two people together without having the conversation of what, one or both of them have gone through it, which is, I think, such the beautiful thing about it. Yeah, you can leave the, the details behind and just connect on the emotion, it, on, the, on the genuine experience, right? That's what we all want. And it's difficult to get there without stripping some things away and being vulnerable and all that. Okay, I admit, that's fine. But tell, tell you what, we need to do it. So how about learning how to do that with something that we already use all the time, the sound and rhythm around us, this music around us. Exactly. And it's something I think in, in the contrast of at least today, a lot of people have so much noise, so much going on within them, whether it's transportation, whether it's, you know, on a phone call with somebody, whether it's, you know, X, Y, and Z within work, back in your social life with family, all these things come around us and, you know, that's why you see people enjoying meditation, people enjoying music, because it kind of just centers and grounds them and it brings them to that place of solace of saying, all right, I can, you know, dig deep within myself and kind of take this time, even though music is still, still noise to your ears, it can kind of, you know, bring you to, to a lower medium than if someone's telling you to do this or someone's screaming at you for why you, you know, did this to them. And I think that's the beauty of it is, you know, it's more than just uh, a sound. It's, it's, there's emotion, there's, there's thoughts, there's, there's an actual lesson to be learned throughout any type of song. And it can be connected to your own experiences, which is so beautiful. Tons of great research on this. Uh, it, it's out there, people. Just search for music therapy and you'll find all of what they're doing with dementia and Alzheimer's and autism and stuff like that. And um, search for music care, you'll find out what's going on with things like what they call um, <laughs> recreational music making, long, long term. But basically what that means is like a drum circle, people jamming together. Yeah. That's an incredible way of being able to connect with your family. We have drums, so we, we drum together. Or in the homeless situation, to be able to give homeless people a chance to express things they wouldn't have a way to express, right? You can do that with a drum. Or building culture. You know, drum circles for building culture? Yeah, it works. You, you meet somebody in a different way when you make music with them than when you just say, you know, hello on the street or you meet a colleague at work. Making music together changes everything. Wonderful, Bill. I appreciate it. And to really to wrap this up, we spoke a lot about, um, you know, music as a tool within the use in deficiency and, you know, just some of the details of what people are facing today and how it can be a, a tool to move forward. Within this episode, I just want to thank you for providing those details. We're going to have the information that you spoke about, music care, and some of these resources within the show notes below. And within the next episode, we're going to be speaking about music as a tool for growth, how to take that next step, and what music care is doing, how Bill is helping those in a challenging situation 
switch their perspective, switch their thoughts, behaviors, and actions to make that next step forward. So thank you all for listening to part one of this episode, and I hope you are ready for part two coming soon. So thank you. Thank you all for listening to this episode. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and review to this podcast. Let us know what you learned from this episode and what you would like to hear in the next episode. This has been your host, Brennan Catulli of the Mental Insights Podcast. Have a wonderful day.